Hi guys, welcome to Pax Europeana, my video channel about um, peace in Europe. But this section I will also add uh, some things about my reform activities, my economic reform activities. But now I would like to specifically focus also about urban revitalization and also reform uh, ideas where identity issues and historic issues, uh, urban planning, uh, the experience from many of the Balkan countries, what really worked, is also then feeded back in the reform of uh, one of the beautiful districts of Vienna. That's the 15th district. Yeah? That's actually in the west of Vienna. It's like the pumping heart, the western chamber of the heart of Vienna. Many of you will know the first district, but the 15th district is very beautiful as well. It's close to the western station, but unfortunately it's a little bit of a stepchild of city development in Vienna. And I hope that can be changed uh, because now it's a reform coalition in Vienna and I would like to add some of my proposals for this debate how to really revitalize this uh, little southeastern Europe which we have in the heart of uh, Vienna. Because very much it's a lot of people from Albania, from Kosovo, from Bosnia living in exactly this beautiful part of Vienna and I think it would be really good uh, to reform and bring some of the ideas which is basically very successfully have uh, re reformed uh, Southeastern Europe in the last years also to this beautiful part of uh, Vienna. So I'm not sure you all have been to the 15th district. Many of in Vienna unfortunately have only passed through it <laughs> and it's something like a pity because it is a really beautiful part of Vienna but it has uh, some need for some changes. Yeah? First of all, what is the problem we have, uh, and that's, I will start with the minor things, which can be easily done, we need more pedestrian areas. And that is very important. We have seen also the Balkan version of pedestrian areas, for example in Mother Teresa Street in Pristina, but many streets in southeastern Europe have been transformed in pedestrian areas. But it's missing here in the 15th district, in so-called Rudolfsheim, actually, just to give you the name, and I will talk about that one as well. So what is important is and the so-called in the southern part, and that's the part uh, south of the uh, railway, uh, of the western railway system, because that's um, dividing the district in uh, two parts, the southern and the northern part. I will call it the Balkan part, that's the northern part, and the Habsburgian part, uh, which is, of course, you know, the Habsburg family. And I will explain you why I will do, divide this in these two sections and what needs to be done. And there should be two major pedestrian areas. The one is the so-called um, Outer Maria Hilfer Street. That many of you might know when you have been in Vienna, that's the big shopping street. But it has two parts the rich part in the center of town and the poor part outside of the town on the way to Schönbrunn. And, but Schönbrunn, that's the imperial castle. But there was actually one street once and it was the street connecting the emperor going from the Hofburg, from his imperial winter castle, to his imperial summer castle. And that was in Schönbrunn. Not exactly the summer castle because it was the spring and the autumn castle in many ways because in the summer he was going uh, to Badischl. So he needed also a train station. So conveniently in between they built the western train station for him in order to pass uh, through uh, Bad Ischl where he spent the summer. And so this is the structure of the uh, southern part of this district. It's very much dominated by this one big street. Unfortunately now the outer part of it looks pretty much like a slum, like a poor part of uh, some uh, Balkan uh, capital. And it's a bit of a pity. And I think it can be very easily improved in, in uh, reforming it also in a pedestrian uh, street like the um, first part of uh, the inner part has been very successfully reformed. So that's the first thing I would really propose to have a pedestrian area as well for the outer Maria Hilferstraße and to rename it into the uh, Habsburg Promenade. And that's uh, controversial, I think. Not everybody loves the Habsburg and it's no way any kind of monarchy or a re a relation or I'm not in any of this thinking. But I think we should uh, honor the historic truth. And also there is a lot of Habsburg uh, relations and it's leading from the Habsburg castle in the center to the Habsburg castle Schönbrunn and it should be also very um, 
uh, tasty for tourism because it's not necessary to have in the heart of Vienna um, a slum a favela. <laughs> and I think that's really a pity actually, to be honest. So it's needed to uh, reform this and along that to also reform the, some of the buildings and make uh, nice piazzas. Because what I also see very much, uh, there is no kind of market culture, no kind of piazza, no kind of outdoor uh, pleasure areas for tourists. Uh, and that's a big uh, problem. And now after Corona, hopefully the tourism will recover and we need to prepare the city and also the 15th district for exactly that kind of revitalization. So and that's my main proposal, the Habsburg Promenade, the Outer Maria Hilfe street and the equivalent in the northern part in the more balkan part is to turn the Merzstraße, and that's uh, one of the big uh, roads leading from the city outside uh, to uh, the periphery and to the richer parts uh, in the hills of uh, the vienna uh, forest vienna forest i would recommend this uh, to uh, to go into the direction of also a pedestrian area it can be started simply like uh, they do it in southeastern Europe with basically uh, no uh, private cars anymore allowed after 5 o'clock to 10 o'clock. That's the very cheap version of a pedestrian street, but that would already have a big impact and it's not very expensive. And later also to do the technical um, and the hardware uh, things. And when you look, for example, how beautiful Skodra has developed, with this business improvement district in Albania or also Korcha or Berat. It is uh, fully possible to do it uh, and it would be really beautiful. Also, I'm in favor of renaming the Merzstraße into the Balkan Street <laughs> because we have to turn this kind of negative ghetto culture into a very positive kind of proud about the region. Anybody who knows the Balkan knows it's anyhow much more beautiful from nature and from architecture and from lifestyle also uh, than uh, Austria in many respects. And that means something because Austria is already very beautiful, but Southeastern Europe is extremely beautiful. And also the urban centers are now revitalized, uh, revitalized yeah? and that could be done as well for the 15th district, I think. Yeah? So that's my two pedestrian streets. Yeah? What is also one bigger and more expensive thing, obviously, is a new subway station. Vienna has a good subway station, but it's unfortunately not well interconnected, especially here in the 15th, 16th district, where a lot of people live, which have no cars, and it's actually quite a poor region compared to the places where more of the Viennese rich people live in the periphery or in the center, and that's a pity. So I call for the so-called U7 and that's um, maybe also the U8, the numbers really don't matter. But it's necessary to have a subway station from Schönbrunn to the so-called Elterlein place. Yeah, that's a square where the now U5 will come from the city center uh, to going outside and then it's necessary to go in that direction. It's the U7 um, or 8, the numbers don't matter, but it is about five stations connecting with the U3 in Jonstrasse and then with the future U5 in Elterlein place, also with the Schmelz to be one metro station. This should be the north-south link to also relieve the U6, uh, the main uh, on uh, um, subway on the Beltway, on the so-called Gürtel. And that's really important to have such a, a new subway. It's not a very long one, so it's also expensive, no doubt. Yeah? But it's really when you want to relieve the city and also the public uh, tra transport focus, that kind of subway is absolutely necessary to uh, make uh, this north-south link which is so overloaded because you always have to go to the U6 and that is also uh, too much capacity is missing on that one. So this connector subway is very important and that are the three most important proposals. And then I call for reforming never the most important, you know, it's always a big topic. Huh? The most important obviously the big question is what to do with the railway tracks because this is a huge area uh, which is uh, in space, uh, called in English a brown land. Uh, These railway tracks in the center of the town, they split the district in two parts. And then it's the problem what really to do with that. Yeah? 
And obviously you need the Western station and so it's very expensive and open question. Some part is now a shopping center at the beginning and the office center. Then it's the IKEA which is added and this needs to be settled. And my proposal is uh, to make a big uh, tech city, a kind of innovation hub and there in the 15th district but not only the private sector, but basically to transfer the technical university from the 4th district towards the 15th district and to um, uh, put all the technical university or most of it, maybe not the nuclear part in the 2nd district, but most of the technical university to put uh, towards uh, the 15th district in the railway tracks and make that an innovation hub. It fits very well to the railway tracks, uh, but maybe uh, it should be focused obviously on modern technology and it should be the innovation city in the center. Basically big buildings also with some not very big skyscrapers but decent skyscrapers and put the whole of the university uh, to uh, the 15th district. And these beautiful romantic buildings which the technical university has at the moment in the 4th district should be obviously used as uh, sold as tourist hotels. Yeah? because they can be wonderful four-star hotels and great uh, assets uh, for luxury tourism and that's what the city is about ultimately. And the innovation part can be very well taken care of, also with student accommodation and with um, a very a new university because as we have seen the same concept has been done already with the Vienna University where I studied. It's now in the second district and got a new campus and that's very good and the technical university above the tracks in an innovation uh, style where below there is still communication going obviously. So the, uh, the first floor is basically the railway but also partly some other, sub, uh, not the access to the subway, one of the stations north-south, but also the so-called uh, tramway would be also needed to go into that one and um, no addition and also some parking facilities maybe it's also necessary and then to build six floors up or maybe eight floors up an uh, innovation city above the Vienna station tracks uh, until uh, the so-called Schlossgasse. It's a lot of space, it's a huge territory. It's I think impossible to put it to completely to the private sector because of this complexity and the costs and it needs a public investment and I think the best idea is to put the technical university there. There might be other ideas. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure about the current planning point, but I think that would be the best way to do it. Yeah? And what else is important? You know, on the museums. Yeah? The, in this high-tech innovation city, the new one, could be also built the technical museum because now it's occupying a really beautiful building and it doesn't attract a lot of tourists anyhow. So a technical museum could be added in this innovation city, in this innovation hub at the rail tracks. And this museum, the Rudolfsheim uh, Museum, the so-called technical museum, should be like a real international tourist attraction focusing about the 19th century Vienna. Because to my best knowledge, we don't have a specific museum for the 19th century. And that's uh, one of the problems Vienna has. And we need also with Rudolfsheim, that's also my proposal, I would not really continue with Rudolfsheim Fünfhaus, but just market and brand the whole district at Rudolfsheim, because that is also touristic value and there is some kind of cultural identity to be built and it's also the historic truth. These were mainly villages before the decision to connect the city towards Schönbrunn and all these new buildings which were built into the second part of the 19th century, basically to, in the name of Rudolf. It was a city developed and devoted to the Archduke, to the crown prince who later killed himself tragically. And all this is wonderful stuff for a museum. You know, the whole Habsburg history is really quite underrepresented in Vienna and this would attract a lot of tourism. So devoted museum to the 19th century, not to glorify the Habsburgian, but to objectively show it and also have towards Schönbrunn another tourist site, which is really attracting international tourism on both sides of the 
um, of uh, the so-called Our Welsbach Park, where, which need a big park and ride center. It has already one, but they have not gone full way. I don't understand that. It should be a big uh, park and ride center together below, basically, uh, together with the new subway station. That is, I think, technically the best way to do that. Also, there is a lot of other additional brown land space because there is the tramway tracks of uh, the tramway system. There's two big uh, depots or kind of uh, logistic centers and they both should be removed, best included in the railway tracks, yeah, basically on this uh, first floor of the innovation center. And also the uh, tramway, which is now at the outer Maria Hilferstraße, the Habsburg promenade, should be integrated in the, in the uh, innovation hub, in the center, in order to liberate also to have no tramway at the outer uh, Maria Hilferstraße, to have a really beautiful promenade. And for the pedestrian tourism towards Schönbrunn, connecting directly the two castles. And then also to build one book museum. And this I would recommend the so-called uh, Dwight Eisenhower um, Museum of American-Austrian uh, Friendship. Of course, you know, Eisenhower has been the president, first of all, liberated Austria as the chief commander of the American forces. And we have already a Soviet uh, monument, a big one at Schwarzenberg. And we have no American one, never, nowhere. It's a scandal for me. And I think uh, Eisenhower Museum would be a huge touristic magnet. Yeah? And we can build it directly at this innovation hub. And there is the space of this uh, railway, tramway depot. And there we can build a relatively big, decent Eisenhower Tower, which would be also extremely attractive for American tourists and to say thank you for the liberation, thank you for uh, the freedom which Austria got, thank you for the American friendship. One room with Schwarzenegger, one room with all these Americans um, which are from Austrian uh, origin and were very successful in America. There is an Austrian-American day in September in America. So this all can be celebrated there and that will be a huge touristic magnet for the American tourists and for the Austrians also to know better that Austria was free because of America and not because of the Soviet Union. And by the way, I'm for NATO membership of Austria. Doesn't make me too popular in Austria since 30 years, but I'm absolutely in favor of that. And so I think that would be really good. Yeah? So it's also that was for the memorial culture and for the museums and also it is important to rename some of the uh, places. Yeah, and I think it would be good, especially in the northern part, uh, to rename some uh, of the places uh, in the names of important Balkan personalities. So I'm in favor of the Wieninger Platz in the upper part, in the Balkan parts north of the tracks. I'm in favor of renaming the Wieninger Platz in Plesque in the name of um, um, Alia Isetbegovic, the hero of Bosnian freedom, and the upper, the furniture park, I would uh, rename in the name of um, uh, Ibrahim Rugova. And then also several others uh, for other personalities we can discuss, but these are the two most important, which are also so close to Austrian's activity and helping the countries to establish independence and also freedom and defend them uh, from uh, Milosevic aggression. I would also recommend uh, to rename the Meisel um, Park, uh, the Meisel Place, into Herzeg Novi. That's a city in Montenegro, I have to explain. But this is one of the other most important activities together with the Schwendermarkt and the Meisel Markt. We have no real square culture. They were all beton, 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 and no coffees. Yeah? Like, I don't know, the policy must be to hate coffee, so it's maybe too cold in Austria. I cannot understand from my experience in the south of the Balkans that these places are only with benches. There is no outside cafeteria culture. And uh, even when the sun is shining, you have to sit, uh, you know, people are sitting there. It looks like in a slum <laughs> for me when I'm coming. There's really so poor places which makes such a miserable expression anywhere in Pristina, Tirana. I'm sure the people are not as poor, but this kind of park bench, sitting, eating, you're drinking beer and nobody is in a coffee. There is no coffee, actually. 
And when you look at the quality of shops there, it's this kind of um, the telephone shops, uh, this kind of, um, you know, the service is great and they're all nice people, but it looks very um, bad yeah? and it is not necessary. I cannot understand why there is no culture to make a real kind of southern Mediterranean coffees everywhere, basically. Especially this should be done at the Maria um, from Siege. It's a beautiful square, not a single coffee there. It's uh, the same at the Schwendermarkt. There is a market there, yes, yeah, but there is no kind of really outdoor culture like in the first district. Yeah? Like uh, the city, like the authorities of the 15th district wouldn't really like the district very much. It's, uh, you know, they don't care. They anyhow, when they go out, they go out to the first district. <laughs> and it, um, it's just for cheap living here. And anyhow, people really don't feel very comfortable. And that's not good. And that's something has to be changed. And I call it the Herzeg Novi concept. But basically, it's everywhere in the Balkans. You have this tradition, you need five, six of the coffees around, which get uh, the sharing of the public space. And then you can basically sit there, drink your coffee, enjoy and make your promenade, which everybody in Albania calls a giro, like from Italy or a promenade or whatever the, uh, the uh, word is. But it's somehow to walk and to sit in between and to have some social life and that, that everything looks a little bit in the theoretically, you know, in my economic reform language, it's called a business improvement district. Yeah? In German, they use it Einkaufstraße, but it's less about shopping, also shopping, but also about sitting, also about a nice uh, environment. Every uh, the, of the shop owners is in one association to pay a bit in. The city subsidizes this and really to love the square. Squares are beautiful. Squares are the center where the market is, where the people meet, where the information meets. Yeah? Squares are like uh, the... Um, like it's called Meisel Square and uh, the Schwender Square and they are for me completely <coughs> expensive uh, misconceptions <laughs> and it's a pity. I'm really very sorry for that and it can be changed so easily. Yeah? So basically that's most of my considerations. Then also obviously to build a kind of um, uh, yeah, this kind of encounter, Begegnungszone and you call it anyhow, but they are not existing and I wonder why. Good. Then there's also some military assets. That's also one of my top uh, topic always, you know, these old ancient military assets in the center. All military assets have to be outside of the capital because we are no longer, like Vienna traditionally was uh, governed by the imperial authorities and they needed the troops to crack down the poor people, the revolutionaries, the liberals, the troublemakers like me. So that was the, my, the students yeah, and the workers. And that was basically the idea. And so the military closed to the center to suppress the people. But this is no longer needed. So what is needed here, all the military assets of Vienna have to be moving to Gerasdorf and to the other side of the Danube in one central location and build a kind of a military village there where all the defense uh, um, academies and all this, other, they should go east over the Danube uh, in one center where also there will be built accommodation and somehow close to public transport somewhere in Gerasdorf where there is space. But in the center you need really to um, yeah, get uh, this rid of and to make sure that all this public uh, uh, it's in the, in the Schmelz because that's also connected to the history of the district. Because you have uh, this um, district, you um, had the Habsburgs basically having their kind of communication lines in between, between the two castles. And to protect them, they needed a military barracks. So that's why in, Hab in Schönbrunn in the back, there is this big military asset. And then you have also at the so-called Schmelz, it's now mostly a university for sport. But on the other side, you have also then still a military asset there, this kind of... Uh, for the um, uh, military draft and actually it's important to abolish the military draft in a liberal democracy which is not at war there should be no obligatory military services and then you don't need all these employ uh, employees to test the you know, strength of the young people and to be ready to serve for the army no 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 and if they should do it in Gerasdorf or somewhere else in the east yeah? and best all of these assets must be out of Vienna and as fast as possible and then in general what also should be done to build more 
and uh, to densify more and uh, to allow uh, that uh, also that the city is growing because we in Vienna can live uh, three million people. Uh, it's not a problem, but uh, with better policy. But as it is, we have not even reached the level of uh, 1916. In 1916, Vienna had uh, 1.2 million people and now we have only 1.9 or close to 2 million. So we have not, after 100 years, more than 100 years, not even reached the level of 100 years ago. So normally, without the wars, Vienna would have already maybe 3 million people and we have to provide also the living spaces and the building activities and also in the 15th district there could be much, much more building if the building policy would be better. Also important to have enough greenery because walking in the 15th district and everybody talks about how wonderful the climate change and everything we will do so much, but I don't see so much additional greenery. When I see, for example, the a Meisel place, a Meisel, uh, it's not a park, you know, it's just flat, but done. <laughs> no coffees, no trees, nothing. Yeah? And many of the streets, uh, you know, they have basically no trees. Yeah? There's also a great website about uh, trees in the 15th district. I looked at it. I recommend very much to look at it as well. And I think that would be very good and we need also to have more pedestrian areas and get more parking garages and to somehow get the parking cars off the sidewalks obviously that's important but also to have a greener city and a greener district and get this done fast because it's a beautiful place it's I said the pumping heart the western part of the of the heart of Vienna but unfortunately it's a bit neglected and it's a bit sad and the disconditions and I think there is a lack of uh, um, feedback from uh, the reform movement of Southeastern Europe because <laughs> it's a bit like a small capital for Southeastern Europe. I see a lot of people who are coming from Albania, Kosovo, Bosnia and they are very welcome. We should be a very open city and especially our friends from Southeastern Europe, they will feel uh, welcome. The languages are spoken here, especially the 15th district is full of um, Bosnian, Serbian, Croatian language and also Albanian, also Turkish. That's all wonderful, but we should uh, love uh, this district more. And also then the new work, um, Austrians who come here to live uh, for many reasons, economically, politically, for safety reasons in the past, they will feel much more part as, uh, at, at home and also much more as Austrian. Because Austria was uh, once the capital of all Southeastern Europe and of uh, Central Europe. And we should be proud about the tradition and we should also cherish the, that kind of um, the past and also prepare for being again an uh, important hub and center economically for Southeastern Europe. But we are a little bit, you know, um, as if it would be too much for us and we are annoyed and, you know, and then everybody sits there on a park bench alone. <laughs> and, you know, I feel really a bit sorry because all the things I said, some of them are expensive, like the metro, I know, but metros, it's part of the city development anyhow. And uh, make an argument that uh, my metro proposal is not useful. I don't think anybody can do. And I know everything with the re uh, west, uh, track, Western Station, the railway tracks is also very expensive. But anyhow, more university buildings will be definitely a priority. And then the alternative, what the city planner do, is not putting the military out, but putting the universities out somewhere. And that's, I think, not the right way to do it. Yeah? The universities should be in the city center. They bring life and action and they are the right um, assets in the city center. Not in the complete city center, though, not in the prime, prime locations. I understand maybe with the main university building, yeah, that's such a unique one. But for the technical university, it would be wonderful to have it in the 15th district. Yeah, that's a little bit of a potpourri of some of my ideas for the 15th district. What I would propose after this now 12 years, I'm here where mostly in the summer and in the winter and now uh, some weeks more during this Corona crisis. But that would be some of my ideas, what should be done on the bigger picture also, you know, when you maybe to say that as well. The one thing is that the Jonstrasse is such a kind of a traffic area, is connected Why? We, because we have don't, don't have a big tunnel under the Vienna forest for the traffic uh, towards uh, the richer parts in the north of Vienna. 
and that's also something which uh, should be addressed but that's very expensive and I understand that's also complicated but many of my proposals can be done just with goodwill and you know a little bit of more um, southeastern Europe Balkan flair uh, in the positive sense you know to have this kind of uh, uh, piazza and square culture with people being allowed to sit in coffees and not only on park benches uh, with their kind of beer which they brought but I think I think that would be decent and it's just a human to make the city more human uh, everybody talks about the green city uh, that's uh, fine I'm the first one but even the 15th district has wonderful greens place to get a, but to make it a bit more human the squares and that would be a good start I think <laughs> and it would be very concrete and it's not so difficult to do so that my ideas that are my ideas here about this beautiful part of Vienna and I will also do some I will walk a bit in the city the next weeks and show some of the parts to you if you're interested and I think it's also all of the things I said are also um, applicable for all other cities in southeastern Europe because basically Vienna, Belgrade and uh, Sarajevo it's all quite similar cities yeah? because the tradition and the city planners were all studying at the technical university either of Budapest or of Vienna but that was the reality and they were all learning and copying the Vienna style and also the 15th district was exactly built by the same architects and by the same urban planners just in the last 100 years of permanent decline and poverty of Austria at this frontier situation we have been uh, somehow neglective of our past heritage and now in the last 20 years uh, the 15th district is coming up and booming a lot of people have invested as also me and so it's gradually moving up but it could be better with some kind of more love and care and a little bit of attention and better ideas for this beautiful but a little bit neglected part of Vienna so my little video maybe some of the decision makers might watch it and maybe I can share some ideas in the future as well concerning uh, this beautiful part of the 15th district thanks a lot for watching bye